Karen Durek is a veteran teacher of 25 years. She's formed the minds of first, second, and third graders, but the kiddos who have affected her the most have been kindergartners. The end of every kindergarten year, I would say, this is my last day in kindergarten. And then middle of summer, I was like, oh no, I can't wait to get started again. After 18 years in the kindergarten classroom, Karen became fascinated with the huge amount of growth that students achieved during the first year of education. But there was one area that troubled her, reading. Research was showing that kids weren't reading, they weren't learning to read. And then if you watch the pendulum, it goes one way. And it's like, I have phonics, everything's in isolation. They just need to link those letter sounds. And then it swings the other way and say, like, we don't have to teach phonics, it only has to be about meaning. And if they just read enough and if they have the words, they'll put it together. And I'm, I'm actually not swinging with the pen on one way or the other. Really thought that it's time for someone to just slow the pendulum down and find out what's working with kids. So Karen teamed up with a fellow teacher named Julie Pine, and they decided to get down to the nitty gritty of research and figure out what would work best for the kids. Dr. Felg is a great friend of mine, uh, calls it messing in the mud. And we were down messing in the mud with these kids, looking at the research and trying things and playing with things, seeing what worked, seeing what didn't work, what stuck with the kids. We started to come up with this formula, this idea, this approach that started to make sense. The literacy formula that Karen and Julie created is called sound learning. It uses environmental sounds that kids are already familiar with and incorporates them into storytelling and poems. The first part of the slide is when you go up the steps. But when we get up to the steps, that's the fun part happens. And we get to go down the other side. It means we're going to go What makes sound learning unique is once we start that sound and we've established it, within that same lesson, they're actually going to learn how to write it, how to find it in a poem, how to make multiple sounds. If the letter has multiple sounds, we teach them right up front. And we actually end with continuous text or a book where the kids are actually going in there and they're finding the sounds in a book. So that whole literacy process that used to be broken down and you had to teach letter sounds, now you have to teach more sounds. Now you're going to have to teach a few words. Now you're going to have to read them some books. We just did away with that and go, why can't they just go from sound all the way to a book in one lesson? And that's what we do for each letter. Sound Learning's journey from a helpful classroom aid to the bookstore began at a conference where Karen was presenting this innovative literacy method. I'm like halfway through an hour presentation and people are going, ah, this is a book, right? Can we, it's the book, where's your, and I was like, hey, what? I, we had absolutely goosebump time. Absolutely no idea it was ever gonna be a book. By the end of the conference, it was evident that sound learning needed to be shared with a wider audience. Julie and Karen went to work with a publisher, authored the book and distributed it to educators. It's not just a worksheet. I mean, it definitely, it's, a lot, it's real interactive and the kids feel like they're a part of it because like I said, you start off with the stories and, and they just, they love it because they like to talk about themselves. How many of you have seen fireworks before? Okay, and um, so as you're watching it, I want you to make the natural sounds that you would make if you were watching fireworks with your family, okay? Oh, ooh, ah, oh, ooh. You know, I have to grab for bits and pieces of a different program or stuff. It was just, it was all there and it all related. And it also related to the content areas like science and social studies. Sound learning can be found in several kindergarten classes in McKinney ISD. I got an email from one of the teachers using sound learning in Caldwell just this morning and uh, she actually sent me her iStation data and everything and she's had 100% of her kindergartners on tier one in iStation since December. Who could come up here and find an ah sound for O? Ah, Caden? I even asked them just the other day what their favorite poem was and they, a lot of them had different answers, which is good because they all, they all like different things, but they remembered it and that was the biggest thing. They remembered the movements, they remembered the sound and the letter and, so, I mean, it stuck with them. Karen contemplates writing a volume two to sound learning. But first, she wants to make sure this book positively affects as many children as possible. 
before writing another book or anything else, I really feel the need to get this in teachers' hands, in classrooms, and to be touching and working with as many kids as possible. It's not me, and it's not Julie. It's what we're doing for kids that count. And it so made that point, and that's really what we've built everything on since then. It's what we're doing for kids. That's what counts. That's our goal.